Hey YouTube. Okay, so I have been asked to do a screencast about PouchDB. Um, I'm Nolan Lawson. I'm one of the major contributors to PouchDB. Um, and what I'm going to do for you guys today is I'm going to go through the Getting Started Guide. And believe it or not, I have never actually done it before. Um, I got started on the project and I never bothered to go through any of the tutorials or anything. So I will be going through all of the pain with you as we do this. So let's begin. Um, so I'm actually, I'm, I'm literally just going to go to the website and follow the guide. I kind of have a cold, so uh, sorry about my voice. This might not be the worst, uh, the best time to do this, but let's just go for it anyway, right? Let's just go nuts. Okay, so I've got this, the Getting Started Guide right here. Uh, if you don't know what PouchDB is, I don't know why you're watching this video. It is a database for your browser written in JavaScript. We're going to build the popular ToDo MVC app using PouchDB. So this is going to be exciting. Uh, these instructions are put together by Dale Harvey, the main guy behind the project. Uh, so I trust that he wrote it coherently. Let's uh, let's see if that turns out to be true. Okay, so uh, download the assets. All right, so let's how should he be getting started to do. Okay, cool. Let's do that. All right, let's download this guy. I'm going to put him in my temp directory because that's where I put basically everything. Um, all right, let's go to the temp directory and let's unzip this guy. <coughs> okay, we have unzipped it and there's a bunch of stuff in here. And I just want to see what's in there, so let's use TextMate just to see. Okay, so we got a bunch of stuff. We got an index.html, we got an app.js, base.js and some style. Okay, this is this is making sense. I can understand this. I don't know I don't know why there's a this base thing seems to be for Google Analytics, which we don't really need cuz this is just going to be a test app. That's okay. We'll leave it in there. It's not going to do any harm. Okay, so um so we got this getting started guide. We're going to start up a simple HTTP server. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to just go into the directory. Um so here I am in the directory. And uh, there's a lot of different ways you can run, you can open this up. So the first thing, you might naively think you could just kind of open up the index.html like from your file, but notice, uh, I want you to, to notice this thing. Ooh, I should have a way to zoom in, shouldn't I? Um, oh geez, oh, look, hang on a sec, let me, let me turn on, there's this cool, cool setting on Mac, accessibility. Um, yeah, you can enable zoom, this is really awesome. Um, keyboard shortcuts to zoom, zoom in, uh, nope, uh, shouldn't be working, oh, it's scroll, scroll gestures, okay, that's cool, or right, we can do that, all right, now we're cooking with gas, that's sweet, right, hope you don't get vertigo, all right, so I want you to look at this, all right, so, if your URL has file colon slash slash in it, that means you're being served from directly from the file directory. Um, that is bad juju if you're trying to run PouchDB, okay? Uh, because Firefox won't allow IndexedDB to be run directly from a file. You gotta run it from HTTP. Okay, so enough nerd talk. What does that mean you have to do? Uh, there's a couple different things you can do. I like this program called Mongoose, which basically just starts up a simple HTTP server. Literally, I like it because it's fewer characters to type than what's recommended here. But let's go off the guide. Let's do what's recommended here which is to type python-m simple HTTP server. So let's go with that. All right, so we have typed python-m simple HTTP server. We have uh, a site now at 0.0.0, .0, blah, 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 whatever. It's a local host 8,000. The important thing is port 8,000. So uh, we're gonna go to local host port 8,000. We're gonna see what we got. All right, cool. We have our to-dos here. And the crucial thing is that this is HTTP, not file. Uh, you can't tell because Chrome and Chromium hides it, but trust me, this is HTTP. So if I were to zoom in, woo, <laughs> this is so neat, woo. Uh, like if you copy pasted that, you would see the HTTP in there. Okay, so anyway, so we got our to dos. Uh, I guess this doesn't really do much right now, does it? Yeah, it doesn't even save anything. So this is broken. All right, we need to fix this. So let's go back to the instructions. Um, okay, so we we're at eight thousand. You see the following screen show you're good to go. Okay, cool. Um, all right, installing PouchDB. Okay, so uh, open index.html and include PouchDB. So 
Yeah, so we started hosting PouchDB on JS Deliver. It's this really nice service. So basically it means that you can just include this script tag right here and it should always work and you should always be able to use the latest version as well. The current latest version is 3.0.2. So let's stick that in there. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the index.html, which you can see here. And by the way, if you're not if you're not sure how I, how I got into TextMate like this, um, this is really easy. You can just open here, I'll, I'll start from the beginning. You just uh, open up TextMate. So that was command space that I did here to bring up this doohickey spotlight. I typed in TextMate, then open up TextMate. Um, it starts off with a blank document, which I don't like. We don't want a blank document. We want the folder that we downloaded. So I'm gonna go to file, I'm gonna go to open, and I'm gonna hunt for it, and I put it in my temp directory, and it is in PouchDB getting started, bam. So we open that folder. Okay, all right, now we're back where we were before, sweet. All right, so we're gonna go into this index.html. <laughs> and, um, okay, there's a lot going on in here, uh, but the important thing, if you're not familiar with web development, the important thing is that all of our scripts are down here right before the end of the body. And that's just a convention. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow the instructions. Right now it's calling in a base.js and app.js. I'm gonna put in, let's copy paste. We're gonna put in PouchDB. So now the PouchDB code is in there and it's available. And the way you can tell is that if you were to refresh this page, all right, it's not actually any different. The functionality is, it's still crap. It doesn't do anything. But if you open up your console, so uh, that's uh, F12 if you're on Windows and then Command Option I on a Mac, probably something similar on Linux. Uh, you bring up this thing, which I'm gonna stick it on the right. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Okay. And I want my console, so I'm gonna bring up the console. Okay, you can press escape to bring up the console as well. Uh, and if I type PO, you can see PouchDB is in there. All right, that means that PouchDB is loaded and it's available. Okay, so sweet, we can use it. All right, let's go back to the getting started guide. Uh, we're gonna create a database. Uh, the rest of your work will be done inside app.js. We'll we will start by creating a database to enter your to-dos. To create a database, simply instantiate a new PouchDB object with the name of the database. Okay, sweet. All right, so we are going to add vardb equals new pouchdb to-dos. All right, let's do that. Okay, and we're gonna put that in app.js. Uh, editing starts here. Oh, I see. Okay, so Dale kinda, kinda put in some, some little breadcrumbs for us to follow. Okay, so let's put, let's replace this vardb equals false, this part right here, and let's punch in our pouchdb. Let's do vardb equals pouchdb, okay. And if we refresh, actually, this is kind of neat. You should you should uh, take a look at this. This is neat. So if we refresh, um, and you go over to the resources tab right here, uh, you'll notice that it says Web SQL Index DB. Uh, it'll be Web SQL if you're on Safari and Index DB and everything else. Uh, so look, we have a little database called Pouch To Do's, and that is actually our empty empty pouch database. And there's tons of info in here. You can. You could debug everything that's going on with your pouch database. Okay, so that's neat. All right, so now that we've done that, let's go back to the guide. Uh, you don't need to create a schema for the database. Yeah, because it's a NoSQL database. You don't need a schema. There is no schema, it's madness. All right, we're, we're shooting from the hip, no schemas. That's how we roll in the NoSQL world. All right, so you don't need to create a schema. You just give it a name. We named our database to-dos very creatively. All right, so let's write some to-dos to this database. Okay, first thing we shall do is start writing items to the database. The main input will be called add to-do and the current text when the user presses enter. We can complete this function with the following code. Function add to-do. Okay, uh, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna copy paste this in and then I'm gonna explain what's going on here because this is kind of important. Okay, so let's go back to our code. Uh, function add to-do, Dale wants us to put, us in, put it in here, so let's do that, bam. Okay, so <clears throat> here's where I can actually teach you something interesting. Okay, so little tip. All right, so this function is going to add a to-do based on this text, all right? And you'll notice that we're calling db.put with to-do, which is this JavaScript object right here, right? Um, and you may be wondering, uh, you know, what is this ID, title, completed, all this stuff? Okay, so let's, let's go through this one by one. Let's explain what's going on here. This happy little fellow right here. This is our document, okay, that we put in the database. Uh, it is a to-do. Okay, this to-do 
has two fields that we really care about, which are the title, which is going to contain this text, all right, and completed, uh, which is going to be false because it's not completed until you hit the little checkbox and make it completed, right? So, right, every to do has a description of what needs to be done. I can't type today. Um, and you're going to put a little check mark, check mark when you've done it. All right, so I so hope this is making sense. I hope I'm not blowing your minds here. Okay, what may be blowing your minds is this part, right? So uh, in a PouchDB and CouchDB database, every document has a special field called ID. All right, this is actually very similar to MongoDB. It's just underscore ID, and this thing is reserved. All right, um, and what ID is, is it's always a string, okay? But the important thing is that this is the primary key for your database. So uh, the way you should think about this is, uh, well, it's like in a SQL database, you would have a primary key, right? This is the primary key. Um, or in a Mongo database, you'd have an ID, this is the ID. Or in a level DB database, you'd have an ID and then mapping to the document. Um, the crucial thing is that we are going to use this ID to great advantage by passing in new date dot two ISO string. Okay. And the reason we're doing that is because PouchDB and CouchDB will sort all these documents by ID, right? And so presumably we want our to-dos to be sorted by when we created them. All right, so what is date? What is ISO string? Well, it's easier if I just illustrate. So let's just copy paste this. You can see what's going on. Um, this is a common trick. We use this all the time when we do uh, databases in CouchDB and PouchDB. All right, so if I go into a console right here, if I can zoom in correctly. Bam, okay. So new date dot two ISO string. So first of all, what's a date? Well, a date is just a date object in JavaScript. Two ISO string gives it a string like this. Um, what's crucial about this is that everything in CouchDB and PouchDB is sorted by string, okay? And it's lexicographically sorted. And so that means it'll sort, uh, because, because of the way the string is output, this is ISO format, you'll notice the year is first, then the month, and then the day, right? So it's August 24th, today, 2014, uh, which means it's all gonna sort by date. And that is ideal. That's exactly what we want. If you're ever wondering how it's going to sort correctly, here's a little, here's a little tip for you. Um, these two dates are slightly different, right? Uh, they're just off by a few seconds. You can compare them in JavaScript using the less than comparator, and we'll see what's less than what. So, you know, a few seconds ago is less than right now. I hope that makes sense because most of you understand how time works. Okay, so I haven't blown your minds yet. All right, let's, let's, let's see if I can eventually blow your minds. Okay, so we've created this object, this uh, this document, and we're gonna put in our, put it in our database, okay? We're gonna do db.put, and then we're gonna pass in the to-do, and the second argument is the callback, which contains uh, either the error or a result. Error is gonna be, uh, you know, something going wrong, you know, a meteor struck the earth, or you lost your connection to the database, if it's a remote database, in this case it's local. Uh, result is usually just a happy little thing that says okay, or something like that. Um, little tip, since PouchDB 2 dot something, uh, we have promises, and so actually you don't even need to use this format. A lot of people don't like this format anymore, and so you can actually get rid of this, and um, I, I, I prefer promises as well, so let me show you how to do that. So instead of passing in this callback, um, which is kind of the old style, of doing JavaScript, we'll do a dot then, all right, and that will hold the result, and then we can console log, you know, everything is a okay, and we'll console dot log the result, all right? So let's put the result in here, um, and then you can do a dot catch right afterwards and pass in an error, right? And you can say, you know, everything is terrible, and here's the error. Um, Okay, so if an error occurs, we're gonna go into this function. If good things happen and all is right in the world, we will end up in this function. All right, simple. That's that's promises 101. This is what they look like. Okay, sweet. So let's do that. Um, let's go back and see what Dale wants us to do next. Okay, so in PouchDB, each document is required to have a unique ID. All right, I explained all that. Okay, yeah, yeah, here's a good one. So he says, you can use db.post, all right, if you want random IDs. Okay, so actually this is this is a good time to talk about this. Okay, you never want to use db.post. I'm gonna come right out and say it. I'm gonna take a stance on the db.put, db.post debate, the great debate of 2014, right? That I'm I'm sure people care about very much. Uh, basically in a pouch db, I'm gonna create a new pouch db actually just for illustration purposes. So just for illustration purposes, I'm gonna create a new db 
uh, some other DB. I'm gonna call it. Uh, I gotta give it a different name. Let's call it Charlie. Uh, I'm gonna call my database Charlie. Okay, I've got a little database right here, Charlie. Okay. Uh, Charlie has two methods. He has post and put. All right. The convention is very simple. It comes from CouchDB days. Um, you put a document with an ID or you post a document and get back a random ID. Okay. Um, and this random ID will look something like this. Actually, I can show you this is a secret API. All right. Uh, it'll look something like this. All right. So these are your IDs. All right. So if you post a document, you'll end up with an ID that looks like that. Uh, so, you know, you can see a couple problems with this. So here's the thing. Um, <clears throat> This is the primary ID that you will use to sort documents in your database, right? Um, if you use post, you are throwing away the one ID that CouchDB and PouchDB gives you, all right, just out of the box. You're throwing it away, right? Because your documents are gonna be sorted ra completely randomly. And on top of that, you've got this huge string that has to be indexed, and it's gotta sort all those. Uh, so, you know, choosing almost anything is better than this. I mean, choosing a date is wonderful. The date is, is a great, is a much, much better default. Than, uh, than choosing the random ID. So don't, never put, always post, okay? Um, so yeah, you wanna do charlie.put, not charlie.post, and give him an ID, and then Charlie will be happier. Okay, so let's go back, all right. Uh, we're done with that little, um, little digression. Okay, so <clears throat> we've set up our add to do function, okay, which adds a new to do. All right, simple enough. Uh, next, we want to show all the items in the database. Okay, so we've included a helper function, redraw to do's UI, that takes an array of to do's to display. So all we need to do is read the to do's from the database. Okay, so Dale included that for us. Uh, that makes sense because we don't care about, care about the UI, right? Right now, we care about database stuff. Presumably, you already know how to make a UI. Uh, otherwise, you should go watch a video about, you know, Ember.js or AngularJS or uh, Backbone or whatever or React uh, you know, something like that. Okay, so anyway, <clears throat> all right, so we've got our function show to do's, and this is what we want to copy paste in. So we're gonna copy paste this happy fellow in, and then I'm gonna explain this. So show to do's, all right, sweet. Okay, so this is, this is a good time to talk about all docs. Okay, so what is this function doing? Okay, so <clears throat> all docs. Uh, it's not the best name in the world, but unfortunately we inherited this from CouchDB, so we gotta live with this. All right, all docs, basically what it means is fetch many documents. Okay, that's all it means. Um, there's a few options you can pass in, okay? So uh, to illustrate, let's go back to the browser. And let's, uh, you know, let's just let's just play around with Charlie, right? Why not? You know, Charlie is not a part of this app, but we can play around with him. Just, oops, oh, oh, oh man, I don't know how to use my own computer. Okay, so let's play around with Charlie. Okay, so I'm gonna illustrate with Charlie. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna put some stuff in him. All right, it's okay, Charlie won't mind. Okay, we're gonna put a document in him. Um, this document is gonna have an ID of foo. And it's going to also have a, a value called bar. And bar is going to be two. Actually, let's let's do something a little bit a little bit better, right? Let's say, uh, let's put in foo and, oh, I'm not creative today. Uh, okay, let, let's put in a person. All right, let's put in a person named Mary. And Mary has an age of, not two, she is uh, 20, okay. We put that in Charlie. Charlie's our database. You want to know how many things are in Charlie? You can do charlie.info. Then, uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make my life easier. Let's define a function that just uh, does console.log. So this will be easier later. You'll see why. Okay, so I've got a function called log. All right. It's log. It's log. It's big. It's heavy. It's wood. Okay, so if you want to see all the documents that are in Charlie, you do charlie.info. Then we can just log. All right. So what is Charlie telling us? All right, Charlie has a doc count of one. All right, that makes sense. He has one document. We just put one in. Okay, let's put something else in Charlie. Uh, let's put Charlie, uh, let's put, we put in Mary. Let's put in Alice. Okay, Alice is 27. Okay. Okay, now if we ask Charlie what he's got for us, uh, charlie.info then log. All right, Charlie has two documents. Great. Okay. So. Now, all docs. So all docs is a way to fetch many documents. So if I do charlie.all docs, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit more so you can see more stuff going on. Sorry about this. Uh, okay, hopefully you won't puke. All right, okay. Uh, we'll do charlie.all docs, then log, just to see what all docs gives us. Um, okay, so it gave us an object. Um, we got total rows two, that makes sense. There are two things in there. And we got some rows. All right, sweet. Uh, there are two things in there. It's exactly what we suspected. 
Okay, we got Alice and Mary. All right, this this is great. This is exactly what we suspected. Ah, but well, one thing you will notice, um, we have a bunch of information here about Alice and Mary, but we don't have their age, right? Well, the reason is that this is another CouchDB thing, all right? Is that when you do all docs by default, it only gives you the metadata. In this case, the metadata is the ID, right? Uh, which is the same thing as the key. It's just it's a CouchDB thing. Um, and then the rev, which is the revision hash. So every document in a CouchDB or CouchDB database uh, is versioned. And the reason it's versioned is because that helps with the replication algorithm. And, um, you know, I can get into that later, but basically you just get one auto-generated. And then every time you make a modification to a document, you get another revision on top of that, another revision on top of that. And that way, two separate databases know how to sync with each other. And this is where the magic of CouchDB replication comes in. Okay, so... All right, oh, geez, okay. So, let's talk about all docs. Okay, so, if you wanna actually get the documents out of all docs, you have to say, include docs true. Okay, so if we do this, docs include docs true, and we look, we should find Mary and Alice in here, and now, okay, there'll be a bonus, bonus field right here, right, doc. And this is the full document that has Alice and her age. Okay, beautiful. So, um, yeah, it's kind of awkward. It's kind of awkward to have to type all docs include docs true just to get a bunch of docs. Uh, if you want to, you can write your own helper function to just kind of wrap that. Um, one of the advantages of this is that if you're reading directly from CouchDB and you only care about the metadata, you don't have to send the entire documents over the wire. So that's one advantage. Uh, but just kind of internalize this, right? All docs include docs true. You get your documents and you're happy. All right. So. <clears throat> Let's go back to this. What was the other thing we did? We also did descending true. So the reason we did descending true is because if you'll recall, uh, we are putting in to-dos with their ID being the date, right? And so normally that would mean that they're going to be sorted from oldest to newest, right? Um, but we want them to be sorted from newest to oldest. We could sort them from oldest to newest. There's really no reason to do it one way or the other, but that's just how we decided to do it here. So, okay, cool. So <clears throat> in our all docs function, uh, we passed in a callback. Oh, and this is this is one little thing. You made a mistake, Dale. You forgot to put in the if error, then you know blow up or whatever. But I mean, an error is not going to occur. That's why he didn't do this. Uh, but this is another benefit of of using promises instead of callbacks. I think is that you can. It's easier to be explicit about this. So I'm, I'm going to use promises here instead. So instead of passing in this callback, this guy, um, we're going to pass in. Uh, oops. Ooh, oh. I'm flying all over the place. Um, okay, we're going to use promises, right? We're going to pass in. I'm just going to do dot dot then, and we'll have our function that uh, is the success condition, and then our function that's the error condition, which uh, we still haven't decided what to do in the case of errors. And uh, most of the time, you shouldn't really need to do anything. Um, I can't imagine any errors coming from all docs, uh, but you can just log it if it happens. If something blows up. Okay, so here we are. This is great. All right, we're cooking. Let's go back. Okay, so we're showing our items from the database. Okay, sweet. Update the UI. <clears throat> now, we don't want to refresh the page to see new items. More typically, you would update the UI manually when you write data to it. However, in PouchDB, you may be syncing data remotely, so you want to make sure you update whenever the remote data changes. Uh, you know, let's, let's go into this later. I just want to show you. I think this app is actually working right now. So let's actually, let's refresh. Um, so we should have our changes now. So now when I post stuff here, it should actually show up. Uh, okay, it's actually not. But I can see in the logs that it's actually, it is posting stuff to my database. And if I go to resources, I'll bet you anything, it'll show me that my index DB has stuff in it. There's Charlie. Let's ignore Charlie. Here's to do's. Um, local store. Yeah, okay, it's got three documents in it. Okay, so there's just some stuff we missed. Okay, so let's follow the directions. All right, let's go back, follow the directions. Okay, so he wants us to call db.changes, which subscribes to updates to the database wherever they come from. You can enter this code between the remote couch and add to do declaration. Okay, so let's do that. So there's a remote couch equals false. We're gonna do db.info. Okay, that's fine. Let's go find this remote couch equals false as you do. Okay, so let's put this in. <clears throat> okay, so what is this doing? This is doing db.info and then we're getting the info and, oh, okay, hang on a sec. So every time an update happens to the database, we redraw the UI to show the new data. Um, 
Oh, okay. Oh, I understand what's going on here. I understand why he's having us do this. Okay, so <clears throat> what this is doing, okay. Because this local database may be syncing with our remote database, we want to know what's going on as changes happen to the database. Um, either because the user added them in this interface or because they added it uh, you know, on some other device that then they got synced up to the cloud, up to CouchDB or Iris Couch or whatever, and then back down into this guy. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to call db.info. Uh, and as I showed you earlier, um, let's, let's actually just show what's in db.info because there's a few very useful things in there, not just the number of documents in the database. Um, so we're going to do that. I'm going to create my own DB. I think I've created a different name. And uh, you can you can have as many uh, pouch DBs open as you want. It's fine. So uh, I named this one to dos, just like we did in the app. And that way, uh, it's synced to the same database. So I can do uh, my DB dot info, and then I got to redefine my log function. But um, yeah, let's just do that right now. Okay. Uh, right console.log, okay. All right, so let's do mydb.info, then log, just see what's in there. Okay, so you'll notice we got a doc count and then an update sequence. Okay, so the update sequence is different than what the doc count is. Uh, the update sequence basically tells you how many revisions have been made to the entire database. And this is a thing that helps keep uh, all these databases synced together. This is the, this is the core replication. Um, and what Dale is having us do here is he's having us use this update sequence of three, uh, when we call the database dot changes, we can tell it, you know, only give me changes since this update sequence. And then, you know, live true means, uh, means keep, keep the connection live, you know, keep pulling for changes. Um, and then every time we get a change, show the to do's. Okay, so this is easy, we're gonna do this. Uh, so we already typed this in, I think. Uh, yeah, okay, so let's just leave this as is, that's fine. This code is fine. Um, okay, so now if we refresh. Okay, cool. So because we got changes, uh, it refreshed, right? Because we did since info.update sequence, so show to do. So show to do's is this function. Um, actually, how did that happen? So every time we got a change, but how did we show? Oh, right, right, right. Because the way, okay, I forgot this. Because, okay, so actually if we type this in, um, db.changes since three will actually give us the last change as well. So we do my, my db.changes uh, since three. Actually, it also gives us three. So here we can just, uh, I should pass in the console.log function again. Okay, so my db, right. Um, new pouch db to do's. Oh, not change, changes. Right, okay, so um, since I didn't pass in live, it just gives us all the results and it gave us results with a list of zero. Maybe live is a little bit different. All right, when it's live, you gotta do on change. Okay, there it is. So, hmm. Well, I don't know how this is working actually. Uh, it's magic. Okay, uh, maybe I'll figure it out later though. Okay, so anyway, let's let's continue with this example. We at least have something that's working, right? This is impressive, at least. So I'm not sure how it's working. Um, yeah, you guys are suffering with me. I, I this is my first time doing this, uh, this demo. So, but this does seem to be working. So I guess I can't complain. You know, this is pretty sweet. Okay, so uh, we got everything stored locally. Um, okay, so next step. Let's edit a to-do when a user checks a checkbox. The checkbox change function will be called. So we'll fill in the code to edit the object and call db.put. Okay, so let's fill that in. Uh, checkbox changed is this function. Okay, to-do.completed equals event.target.checked. db.put to-do. Okay, so yeah, put, by the way, it's kind of counterintuitive, but put is called when you create a new document or when you update a document. So uh, what's gonna happen now Actually, let's just print this out. This is a little better. So when we get this event, we will uh, we'll also console.log uh, the to do that's changed, all right? Just so you can see it in the console, see what's going on. Okay, so let's refresh. Okay. Um, 
It's not loading for some reason. Oh, did I make a syntax error or something? I don't think I did. This looks fine to me. Um, let's just stop the server and start it again. Maybe something weird happened. Okay, who, who knows, whatever. The, the Python script messed up or something. Anyway, okay, so we're back here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to check one of these and sweet, we got a checked event that changed. Um, so we're just gonna check and uncheck and it keeps, uh, keeps updating it. And what you'll notice is that each time I'm updating the same one, uh, the rev is increasing. And actually what you may notice here is that it's increasing in a way that's a, it's kind of human readable actually. Uh, we start off with two, three, four, five, and then a random string afterwards. And that's just a CouchDB convention. So you can see basically how many revisions were made to this document. So it's sort of like the metal model you can use for this, I think, is Git. That's a really that's a really good way to think of it. Basically, what we have here is we have four documents, right? These four guys, and each of them has a history going all the way back to when they were created. Uh, in fact, even when you delete a document, all that happens is it just gets a deleted property set to true. So this is the way CouchDB works, and because it's set up this way from the ground up. This is really what distinguishes it from other databases, it and PouchDB and kind of all the databases in this Couch family, like CloudAnt and, uh, and Iris Couch, which is just CouchDB and uh, CouchBase. Uh, that's really what distinguishes them from other databases is that it's built with replication in mind. And so there's this revision history for every document going all the way back, which means that when two databases compare themselves to each other and say, you know, Hey Charlie, what, what have you got for me that's new? And Charlie can tell you, well, since revision seven, you know, you missed this, that, and the other thing, and here's the changes. Um, so this is how CouchDB stays uh, stays synced when you sync everything, and that's the thing we're gonna do next. So let's sync everything. Uh, so we got edit to do, um, right? It explains rev, uh, delete an object. Okay, so we gotta fill in this delete code, and to do that, we'll call db remove. And like I said, all that does is it just adds um, a deleted field to it. And actually, we, I think I'm going, to show the, I'm going to show you that. So let's fill in the deleted function, um, db.remove to do. Okay, good. Uh, and by the way, all of these are promises, by the way, so this, this put and this to do. So all of these, you can put a then and a catch. Uh, we're not doing that because I'm running long on time and I should just hurry up and, and show you some cool stuff. So in fact, let's just, uh, I'm just going to stick with this for now. So db.remove that will remove stuff. We can make sure that that actually works. So I'm refreshing and I'm still getting the same data. That's cool. Uh, let's delete Baz. Let's delete this foo. Okay, and then that stays. All right, sweet. Okay, so we're able to delete stuff. We're able to modify stuff. Now we're cooking with gas. Okay, so complete the rest of the to-do UI. To-do blurred is called when a user edits a document. Here we'll delete the document if the user has entered a blank title and we'll update it otherwise. Um, to-do blurred. Oh, this makes sense. So, so Dale wants us to make it so that when you, um, when you remove the text from a to do, it just deletes it. I, I, I guess that makes sense. I don't know. You might want to throw an error to the user or something. This is fine. So we will, uh, we'll fill in this function, to do blurred, <clears throat> and uh, I'm gonna make sure this actually works. Let's check this out. Okay, so if I refresh, so I should be able to change the name of this. You know, make it something actually useful. Uh, make a screencast. All right, that's what I'm doing. And this one is make it awesome. Hopefully I've done that. Um, okay, so, and then presumably, if we just enter in zero text, it should delete it. Aha, okay, it does, sweet, okay. So, all right, we got this, we got this cooking again. Okay, awesome. So, <clears throat> next step, you know, what you all came here for, right? Why are we using CouchDB? Because it syncs, right? That's the awesome thing about it. So that's what we're gonna do next. So. Um, the next step of the instructions is installing CouchDB. So I already have CouchDB installed, um, but uh, I can I can go through a, a few of the instructions to uh, make it clear how to do this. Uh, there's a CouchDB provider called Iris Couch, which is great. I've used them. I've used them for big projects actually, and I still haven't run up a bill, which is kind of blowing my mind. I'm not sure how that happens yet, but um, as long as you don't run up more than five bucks a month, they don't charge you anything. And uh, so far, I've been under five bucks, which is pretty crazy because I've been I've been hitting it pretty hard, uh, but uh, it's, it's pretty nice. I like it. Uh, there's other ones too. There's CloudAnt, uh, which is a big one. There's CouchBase, which, which is another big one. All these guys are compatible, and uh, you can use them to have uh, a CouchDB or CouchDB-like database running in the server, and they all use the same replication protocol. So this is, this is one of the big selling points, in my mind, of CouchDB and PouchDB and this whole uh, 
Ouch family is that, you know, if you don't like a service, you can always just pack your data up and go somewhere else, right? You're never locked in. So, okay, so that's awesome. Okay, so I'm not gonna set up an Iris couch though, cause I want to make this go a little bit faster. I'm just gonna use my local couch DB. Um, and then, so I'm gonna show you how you would set up your local couch DB. So, um, <clears throat> so the way you'd install, if you're on a Mac, uh, you just type brew install couch DB. If you don't have homebrew, uh, go and get homebrew, it's awesome. Uh, on Linux, you would type sudo apt get install couchdb. As long as it's version 1.3 or above, you're fine. And I think most of the distros have uh, the latest version of couchdb now, or a late, late-ish version. If you're on Windows, you need to go to couchdb.com, download it, install it. Uh, there's another solution too, which is we have this thing called couchdb server, which is basically uh, an HTTP layer on top of couchdb, which acts like a couchdb. Um, I wouldn't use it in production, and I've written a lot of it, so you know I I think my opinion is valid here. Uh, it's it's kind of it's it's kind of a toy compared to CouchDB. I mean, it works. It passes all of our unit tests. It's amazing for like you know getting up and running, and you know testing and stuff. I, it's really really great for that. Um, and the way you would install that is you would do npm install g CouchDB server. So we install it globally, right? And I already have it installed, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, when you start it up, you just do CouchDB server. And pass in the port you want to run it at. Let's put it at port, uh, I don't know, 9,000. Why not? Okay, so, all right, so we got a PouchDB server running on port 9,000. If we go here to this URL, we can see. Um, so there's our PouchDB server. Uh, and this underscore utils is just a convention in CouchDB. Um, so it, once you get your CouchDB up and running or your PouchDB server or whatever, um, the default port that they'll usually run on is not 9,000. I mean, up. Uh, it's usually 5984. I don't know where it comes from. You'd have to ask Damien Katz why those numbers are special to him. But if you go to um, 5984 slash underscore utils, you can get the futon UI uh, to CouchDB. And this is my CouchDB. You can see I have a lot of stuff going on in here, right? Because I've had this for a while. These are all my databases. Um, and a uh, little, little tip. So you may notice that you know this UI looks a little bit fancier compared to this UI. Um, that's because this is, oh, hello, little friend. Oh, I got a little like fruit fly or something. Okay. Um, anyway, <clears throat> that's because this is the old futon UI. There is a new photon UI, which uh, you can access. Here's a little trick. If you're running uh, 1.5 or later, you can go to uh, underscore utils photon with a slash afterwards. Make sure to add the slash. This is very beta, but it's exciting beta stuff. You get this cool UI. Um, and if you're using Cloudant, you have uh, this UI uh, already built in because that's what they're using. It'll be blue instead of red, but it's the same thing. So anyway, you can use any of these UIs. They're great. Uh, they're fun. This is a really nice thing about CouchDB is that, is that you can just access it via HTTP because that is the primary way of communicating with a CouchDB database. Right? That that blew my mind when I first started with CouchDB. Right? You don't need um, you don't need any kind of crazy um, oh, geez, what are they called? Um, uh, okay, the word is escaping me, but uh, you know, you don't need any native bindings or anything like that. You just talk to it over HTTP, and that's the way it works. And in fact, that's the easiest way to work with it. You can just you can talk to it with curl if you want, right? You can just use curl to 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 throw JSON back and forth. It's really cool. Anyway, okay, so here we are. We got uh, a couple databases. Let's let's use Couch CouchDB. Let's use the real database. So I'm gonna close CouchDB server, uh, even though it's kind of neat. Okay, so we got our CouchDB right here. Um, let's follow Dale's instructions. All right, so this is important, enabling cores. Okay, so cores or uh, cross-origin uh, request stuff, something like that. Um, basically, uh, you'll need it because uh, CouchDB is hosted on one port, right? And your app is, is hosted on another. And uh, you know whenever you want to request resources, from one server, from another server, you need to use cores. Uh, in the olden days, we used JSONP for this kind of stuff. Cores is the new way of doing this stuff. Uh, CouchDB by default does not come with cores enabled. So uh, this used to be actually really painful, but uh, Calvin, Calvin Metcalf was really nice and he set up this uh, script to do it automatically for you. So this is pretty awesome, you can run this. Um, so just install this uh, node script, add cores to CouchDB. All right, really descriptive name, and then you just run it. And I think I already have it installed, so let's just run it. And I'll show you what's going on, so let's run it. Success, okay, so you can check to see this is working by going into your UI, 
uh, go to config, and you should see, okay, cores, okay, sweet, cores, credentials, true, headers, methods, blah, blah, blah. Okay, all you need to know is that if you see cores in here, if you see this stuff, uh, this stuff, that means that it works. That means that it's working because uh, CouchDB does not have any of this enabled by default. Okay, so cores is working, sweet. All right, so next step, um, implement basic two-way sync. So now that we have the to-do uh, list sync, back in app.js, we'll need to specify the address of the remote database. Remember to place user pass and myname.iriscouch.com with the credentials of your own CouchDB instance. Uh, we're not using iriscouch, you can if you want to, that's fine. Uh, I'm just gonna use my local database because it's, uh, it's easier for me. So remote couch equals blah, 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 blah. Okay, so let's fill this in. So if I go back to app.js, um, remote couch equals false. No, we don't want false, we want this guy. Okay, so uh, this is not the database I want. I want um, localhost 5984 slash to do's. And I think I already have a database called to do's, so because I was doing something else. Uh, so let's go and just delete that if that exists. So what you can do is you can go to the um, your list of databases and um, I have a lot of databases. <laughs> um, I guess I don't have one called to do's. Okay, so that's good. So uh, this should work. So the, con the way it works in CouchDB is you put the path to your CouchDB or to your Iris Couch or whatever, slash the name of the database. And if you want to check this is working, um, you can punch it in the browser like this. And okay, it gives us an error, no DB file. That means the, the database doesn't exist. So uh, PouchDB will create this database for us if it doesn't exist. So that's a really nice default setting in PouchDB. Okay, so um, we filled in this remote couch. Okay, let's go back to the instructions. Uh, then we can implement the sync function like so. Function sync, sync dom dot set attribute, data sync state syncing. Um, I don't know what sync dom is, but I assume it's something something smart that Dale put in. So, um, yeah, that looks good. Uh, ops equals live true. So live sync means that it's going to keep pulling for changes. Otherwise, it just syncs and then it stops, which you can also use. Like you could just um, you could set up so it just syncs and then you do something else. And like you know maybe the user has to explicitly press a sync button in order to make it sync. Like you can do that. Um, most people use live to make it live. Uh, and then it does db.replicate to and db.replicate from. Okay, here, here's a here's a tip. Um, we recently added a new API, so you don't have to say db.replicate to and db.replicate from and do this little dance, right? We call it db.sync. So um, we can use that instead of this. So I'm gonna paste this in. And we've got, where do you wanna put it? Function sync, okay. Function sync, okay, cool. I'm gonna paste this in. All right, and I'm gonna show you uh, this new method. So instead of explicitly, so what this is doing, this is saying db, remember, is our local database, right? This is the one we instantiated with uh, PouchDB, blah, blah, blah. new PouchDB to do's. That's our local database, right, in the browser. Um, and then remote couch is our remote database running on CouchDB, right, this guy. Okay, so what this is saying is this is saying uh, replicate to the remote couch and then replicate from the remote couch to us. So it's two way bi directional syncing, right? Um, and then to make this easier, you know, we set up this thing called db.sync, so you can just use that instead. So db.sync, remote couch, ops, sync error, bam. Okay, so that should work. I'll save that, uh, let's refresh. And if this works, then, um, okay, we shouldn't see any changes here, that's good. No, you, sometimes you'll see errors in here, like poor project, my phone, whatever, like, that's, that's fine. It's because there's this handshake going on between PouchDB and CouchDB. It's figuring out what exists in the local database. So it'll look like an error, but it's not an error. Don't worry. The way you can tell this is working is if we go back to our database here with our uh, localhost 1594 slash to do's before, it said there's no database. But uh, presto change, if I refresh, there is now a database. Yeah, that's right. And um, look, it's got a doc count of one, doc delete count of three, because I guess I deleted three documents, a bunch of other information, um, and then most usefully in this UI, uh, if I refresh this, we should see, there it is, a to-dos database, right? So this is our to-dos database. And look, it's got the same data, right? And so this is this is really cool. This is like, this is the, uh, you know, this is the 
the prestige, right? This is the part of the magic trick you guys all came to see, right? This is the cool part, is that if I add something here, so make a screencast, make it sync, right? So it saved here, and then guess what? It saved here too. Ooh, ah. Okay, so this is where it gets really cool because now that it's synced with the browser and with Couch TV, right? I can open this in another browser. Uh, let's open up uh, Safari. All right. <clears throat> Let's put this in here. And look, I got the same to do's. It's amazing, right? And look, here, uh, I'll set them up side by side. This is this is the coolest part of the trick. And you can watch it, uh, you can watch it sync in real time, right? So let's, uh, let's close this. Okay, so watch. Hello Safari. Hey, look at that. Hello Chrome. Okay. And in fact, uh, if I could access this from my phone, uh, which I don't think I can, I am on the same Wi-Fi, I guess I could, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, your phone, you could open this up on your phone. It'll work on any browser. Uh, by default, PouchDB works all the way back to IE 10. Uh, if you want it to work earlier than that, then you're gonna wanna go to pouchdb.com slash adapters.html. And we have uh, a little explanation here. We have an adapter called the local storage adapter, which uh, local storage is, uh, is a, a very, very uh, rudimentary database that's implemented on older browsers. It's implemented all the way back in IE um, 8, I think, IE 8 and 9, yeah. Um, you'll want that, and you also want the ES5 shims. Um, this is all explained in about PouchDB. Um, it says something about ES5 shims here. Uh, yeah, there we go. If your browser does not support this, yeah, IE less than 9, well, you'll want to use the ES5 shim library. Okay, so, but anyway, but, Modern browsers, it's all supported. It's all in there. In fact, this uh, this this uh, Safari right here is running on Web SQL because this is Safari seven. It doesn't have Index DB. So if you brought up the developer tools and you looked at what's going on in there, uh, I don't even know where this is on Safari. Let's see, uh, databases. There it is. Um, yeah, that is a Web SQL database. All right, this is this is SQL, <laughs> and uh, this is being synced with Chrome, which is running on Index DB, and they're being synced back to uh, Couch TV. So this is this is really neat, right? In fact, you can have like the way that the replication works. It's it's what's called multi-master, uh, which means that it's uh, there's no um, there's no primary database that's replicating to all these databases that are only read only. Every database you can write to, every database you can read from. You could have 20, uh, 20 databases in the server, and they're just all replicating to each other, and uh, you know hundreds or thousands of of client databases in whatever browser or device you want, they all just sync with each other, and uh, and it just works. This is uh, this is what makes me excited about PouchDB. So um, I mean, I could just gush, but I'm not going to. So anyway, so this works. That's cool. Uh, let's go back to the to do. Uh, okay, we implemented basic two way sync, uh, replicate to replicate from. Okay, so congratulations, you've completed your first PouchDB application. Okay, so if you wanted this to go live, um, it's a very very easy path to going live. Um, I will show you how to do that. Because uh, I might as well, I think I've got time. Um, so the way you do that is you'd go, you'd get yourself a Cloudant or get yourself an Iris Couch. Uh, I've already got an Iris Couch. Um, uh, once you get it set up, uh, it just gives you a Couch TV that you can just, um, that you can just access right here. Um, actually, I'm not going to go through that because I don't know where my password is. But anyway, uh, oh, so l let me show you this. How about let's uh, let's sync this Couch TV to Pouch TV server, right? Why not? So. Um, I'm gonna start up PouchDB server, right? So in the same way that I showed you before, I was doing that, so let's, oops, let's zoom in on this. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna do PouchDB server. I'm gonna put it at port, what was it, 9000? Okay, so sweet, we got our PouchDB here. And there's a couple different ways you can do this. Um, one way that's really easy is you would just open up PouchDB server. Uh, we'd add a new database, we'll call it to-dos very creatively. And then we want the we want this this to sync with our couch TV, right? These guys are two completely separate databases. Um, and the way we'll do that is we'll uh, we'll go into the couch TV configuration under replication. All right, replicate changes from local to remote. Yes. Okay, so we want to replicate from our food no, to do's database to a remote database. Um, you know, it's remote from the perspective of this couch TV because it's running um, it's it, it's running on another on another port, right? It doesn't 
That's not what it means by remote or local. And at this point, you could punch in um, the address to your uh, to your Iris couch or to your Cloudend or Couchbase or whatever you want. Um, and this will just uh, this will replicate. And you could set it to be continuous. So you could just sit back and relax and let these two databases sync with each other, or we could just do it one time. Now let's do it continuous. Let's have fun. Let's go nuts, right? So I think this is the right URL, and I can check by punching it in. And uh, yes, okay, so we got a database. It's empty. It's got doc count of zero. This is the one we just created on PouchDB server, right? Okay, so that's the one we want to sync to. Let's replicate. Okay, replication has begun, blah, blah, blah. Magic is happening. Okay, so now if we go back to PouchDB server, uh, hey, what do you know? There are four documents in there. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so this actually works, right? So now as I make changes, uh, let's make some changes in Chrome. Let's add a fifth task. Okay, so that should show up in Safari. It has. It should show up in CouchDB uh, under to-do's database. Uh, there it is. <clears throat> okay, so showing one to five of five. There are five documents in your suite. Um, and then in PouchDB server, there should be five as well if I refresh. There are four. Um, okay, there, hmm, there may be a bug in PouchDB server. Like I said, I, I, would, I would more trust CouchDB uh, than PouchDB server with this stuff. Okay, so. Um, hmm, okay, well, anyway, well, I guess if I replicate again, it should work. So let's replicate from. Uh, from CouchDB to PouchDB server. Try continuous again. Uh, it's replicating. Okay, there it is. It's in there now. Okay, so I'll probably be looking at that bug later. But anyway, but it doesn't matter. So anyway, uh, we've got our working app with CouchDB and PouchDB. Um, so that's that's it. Hope you enjoyed this screencast and uh, go have fun, make cool apps.